Getting rid of all that air in the system. Yeah! Man, that can be frustrating. Did I even get that on camera? I did. <laughs> Victory. Hey folks, this is Brian. I've got a great video for you here today. If you're subscribed to my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter accounts, you've seen footage of a, or pictures of this job that I've been working on, a 6.4 liter. Put new injectors, new turbo, and a new rocker arm assembly in it. As a result of that, there's a bunch of air. All of those injectors don't have any fuel in them. And diesels, their ignition system is based on compression and high pressure fuel. You can't have high pressure fuel if there's a bunch of air trapped in the system. So what we have to do is we have to do something to get all the air out of the high pressure side. You can see this little valve here. That's what this video is about is how to make that so you can get the air out of the system. But at the same time, you got to be really careful not to introduce any shavings or any debris into the system. Diesels are high pressure and high stakes. There's all these precision components and they're made to have a lot tighter tolerances than your gasoline counterparts. Stay tuned. Come along and I'll show you how I got this done. It's not exactly centered on the thing. It's close enough. 2x4 is plenty deep enough to be able to accommodate the thing. And who doesn't have a 2x4 block sitting around, right? I've got my banjo bolt put into the wood block. I basically took a paddle bit like this one and I drilled a half inch hole because the threads on this are M12 by 1.5. So this is 13 millimeter half inch. So that's enough to get all the stuff through. So what I do is I drill the hole, stick the bolt in, and then I take a big flat hammer that's not going to damage the back side of it and just pound it into the wood. The wood's soft enough. It'll take it, but hard enough that it'll hold it when you're drilling as long as you're not too aggressive. So I got a little bit of oil on there. You can see it's on my finger now. But we're going to drill a first hole, and before we do that, take a nail. Let's get it between all the points right there. Stand it up. Give it a little whackity schmackity with the hammer. Pull, do something small, and then do something a little bigger, and then do something a little bigger. And well, of course, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm, I'm measuring like this. So this drill bit is 1068, and then this one here is 1089, 1072, something like that. 24 threads per inch through uh, 7 sixteenths, anyway. I might just abort and do this, but I'm going to get my small holes first and then see where I'm at. This was like 7 bucks at Lowe's, this was 3 bucks at Home Depot. This you have risk of stuff falling off, including epoxy to seal the stupid thing up, or silicone. This should thread in and be fine and be kosher for a high side fuel system. If junk gets into your high side fuel system, you're screwed. I mean, even air will make it not start. When you get anything else in there, it can really shrapnel and ruin everything getting into your ejectors and be a real nightmare. So you want to make sure whatever you do, there's no little loose pieces that are going to fall into the system when you're bleeding it. I've got this secured to the table. I've got that secured within the wood block. I've got it centered so that if I look at it this way, the points line up across the bit all the way around. And I just sit on it for a little bit with the oil. actually pushing the drill bit up into the thing but it is cutting just a little bit. Just go slow, let the oil flow back in. Get a little more. This bolt's actually really hard. that first hole to be as centered as possible, as clean as possible. You see I completely screwed the pooch on this because the block slopes this way and the bit favored that side. At least I'm within tolerances if I use the barbed one. Never seen a Harbor Freight drill bit cut so well, or right, whatever you want to call it. Let's get rid of the cotton altogether. Your little dipper improves dramatically. I don't even 
push them. And we're through. Never grabbed it, never spun it, we're through. It's just a crooked hole. Even after all I did. And it's rocking. I just straighten it by just going slow. I take the oil and I touch the drill bit up high so it'll just flow down to it. If I can get a good start, I might be able to get it straight again. drippy thing was not a bad idea. I'll show you what I was doing here. So I just run the oil like that, turn it back on. Actually looking a lot better. So much for the pilot hole. And that's getting hot. You know what I do when things get hot? Oil them! Yeah! That's just sinking down through that now. Imagine even one of these shards getting into the high pressure fuel system, what a mess that would make. I'm so happy with this. It's funny, the outside of this bolt's really hard, but the inside's not. Once you get it started, you're golden. It's soft in the middle. Must be some kind of French confectionery design. Woo, we're through. Alright, so there's our hole. We'll unlock that. You saw at the end it caught and just ripped my block apart, but I guess we're done. Aside from cleaning this mercilessly. Looks like I did not waste $8 on that bolt. That'll be usable. So the block idea was good. It worked. It's actually surprisingly centered, but we still have a little ways to go because when we look at it this way, you can see those little barbs. I have to clean those off. Those are not allowed. If I were to take this and run it the way that it is, I would knock those through and they just kind of be hanging out in there. That would be so bad. So we're gonna have to clean that up. I think I am gonna rock this just because it's so big and it won't get lost in the toolbox. But if I go too deep like that, then that could create some problems too. But let's knock those barbs out and see where we're at. And surprisingly, I thought that that bit would be fine for the barbs here, but you can see they just pass right through. That'd be a problem. This should be terrifying. When I drilled it while everything was smashed together like that, not only did it get crooked, but look at all the stuff that was hanging out there. That could have ended up in the high pressure pump. Is it really worth it to make one of these? More and more I'm saying no. Anyway, I've got a HVAC O-ring. I've got this set up. So I'm gonna press the O-ring in the hole. So I buzzed around this lip on the wire wheel. And I've got a socket that fits it. Just so happens to be eight millimeter. So I'm gonna just see if I can knock it down in there. I think I'm pretty lucky. Even though it's all bent, it still went down in there. There's a line around this thing halfway. But anyway, I think that's good. I'm gonna see if I can get it to seat just a little lower. There's an O-ring that's in there. I put the O-ring in first and then chased it with the bit, but that's in there good. Wonder what happens if I plug the holes and blow in it. Good luck plugging all the holes. You can get false readings, false negative. It's good. Pretty freaking fancy. I think I earned my hundred bucks. It took me two hours, so if you make fifty bucks an hour or more, just buy one. Just smushed around and just really sealed in. So between the O-ring I put in and everything else, this thing's pretty clean. And it's in there really, really good. It's not coming out. So, voila, I made one. And I learned quite a bit along the way about what a pain. But I think it turned out really good. I don't think you could do much better than that. It's all pressed together. There's a good rubber O-ring seal in there. I think this will be good for a lot of years of service. So I'm just going to hit it one more time with brake cleaner, compressed air. Make sure there's no debris or anything on it and we'll put it into service. Things flushing good. You see all that? So we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna let the air rise for a minute. I bet this thing would start now. 
you look up close, it's not leaking anywhere. It's doing good. Look at all that air. Imagine how long you'd have to crank and purge to try to get rid of that. That would take forever. All right, well we got the fuel system bled. We've got the coolant filled. I mean, everything's just ready to go. Go for it. So both of those codes are for the pressure sensors, or for volume and for pressure. So underneath of this heat shield, where it's easy to just overlook, this is unplugged. I knew I'd forgotten to plug something in, because I was so careful on every stinking torque spec and every single thing, but this one, it's like stuck underneath. There we go, that's how it should look. I'll click that in, cover it up. <sighs> This should fire right up. Yeah! Oh, man, that can be frustrating. Did I even get that on camera? I did. <laughs> Victory.